Hey everyone, Tactics here, and today we're going to talk a bit about Guardian Druids because as I'm sure a lot of you already know, and maybe you don't, but basically there's been some pretty significant changes to their talent tree on the 10.1.5 PTR, so we're going to go through them, we're going to talk about what's actually changed, what still I think is missing, and just kind of give my general thoughts on it because I know a lot of you have been asking about it. This is the tree pulled up on Wowhead here, and to start, let's talk a little bit about the actual changes themselves that have been made uh, to the tree and then buffs to specific talent so talking about the tree first a uh, neat little surprise here dream of scenarios is now extremely accessible it's moved up from the capstone all the way to the first tier so that's pretty nice thorns of iron has also been moved out of the capstone area and has moved into the old soul of the forest spot over here by the iron for talent so makes sense there so the forest has been shifted to the center of the tree where there previously was nothing down in the capstone area, uh, the Rend and Tear Untamed Savagery choice note is swapped places with Pulverize. So it's now a lot more accessible, easier to pick up, and feels pretty nice, especially over Pulverize. But we'll talk about Pulverize here later on. And just in general, there's been some shuffling of the talents here because, of course, Dream of Scenarius has moved, Thorns of Irons have moved, and then they've done a little bit of rearranging here, like of Scintillating Moonlight and like Galactic Guardian and stuff, Moonless Knights over here now. And there's just some new connection nodes, as you can tell. Uh, from Incarn over to Rage of the Sleeper, uh, as well as Raze. In terms of individual talent changes, Innate Resolve here at the top is now increased Frenzied Regen healing based on your missing health, instead of just a flat boost to your Frenzied Regen and Regrowth healing, so that's a pretty nice buff, especially when you're using Frenzied Regen at lower health values. Um, Lunar Beam actually saw a pretty massive buff, actually. It's now uh, an 8-yard radius up from 5, and it actually gives you 15% mastery when you use it and of course it already has those previous buffs uh to the to cooldown it's now a minute cooldown and so it's actually pretty comparable now uh to rage of the sleeper they're both pretty pretty solid buttons to have so that's really nice they are finally lunar beam got the buff it's so desperately needed um raise another massive change here uh raise no longer replaces maul so when you take raise you have both options available to you this is going to be really really nice in mythic plus where you're going to be able to raise uh in aoe situations and then on boss fight you're not going to be losing damage because you don't have to press raise anymore you can now continue to press mall you need another keybind of course but i think overall very very good for the health and the state of the spec in mythic plus scenarios uh moonless knight down in this capstone area also got its damage bonus doubled it was 10 percent now it's 20 percent, so that's a pretty nice boost there and then flashing claws again in the capstone area now increases your total number of thrash stacks that you can put out by one per point so uh with full points in this you'll be able to have five stacks of thrash as opposed to three has some nice synergy there with rend and hair so overall there's a lot of good changes to this tree for looking at like what what might be builds uh coming up in this patch i think there's two main ones one that makes use of thorns of iron one that doesn't uh so as a thorns of iron example here you can go down the tree standard thorns of iron stuff uh, you know, I don't mean first thing for something, grab DOC now, which is nice. Going down the traits here for iron fur, of course, getting your thorns of iron. Moving through this whole middle area here, picking up all this stuff. And I believe you still have up points, so, you know, that can go up here, nay, nay, resolve. Can go one point, fury of nature, doesn't really matter. Now, of course, every single build is able to pick up a rend and tear plus ursox fury. This is the one of the biggest benefits here, this double wombo combo. Now, I will note, you are having to give up scintillating moonlight. To do this so you are losing some of that flat dr right this was a 10 percent flat dr to moonfire you're gaining back a six percent dr six percent damage and the ursox fury shield so overall i think it's a fair trade uh for what you're getting uh, but that is something you are losing slash gaining uh now if we're talking about mythic plus here uh i think of course you'd probably go down here of get all this stuff there and this for rage gen so you'd have your raise which you'd be able to use an aoe which synergizes both with vicious cycle and tooth and claw and then you can swap back to maul and single target you get your incarn cdr all that good stuff you get your rage of the sleeper uh now if you're swapping this to a raid i think you could justify dropping all three of these points depending on the fight of course fight dependent but like you could do something um like this pick up a bunch of extra damage pick up a lunar beam this could be interesting you know maybe you want to keep the blood frenzy maybe you want to keep the incarn cdr either way i think there's some options here uh and when it comes to raiding at least with this build in thorns of iron now if you want to talk about your more uh regular like uh, arcane based build let's go swap to that so we're going to go up here we're going to get innate resolve we're going to swap this over to gory fur to path down this way survival the fittest after the wildfire of course 
getting all your maul talents boom and then you're moving down here again rendon tear and earth socks fury moving down if we're talking mythic plus we're going to go down to raise get your cdr here same deal you want your rage generation stuff from twin moonfire and galactic guardian and like if you're talking raids again you can drop this you can do basically the same thing as the other build drop this uh maybe you don't need the cdr you can pick up lunar beam that kind of thing uh lots of interesting power gains here because now as an example in this build uh, you gain Dream of Scenarius, so you have uh, a ton of off-healing now with Dream of Scenarius after the Wildfire. Uh, Self-healing as well, right? All these can both be used on yourself, plus you have this innate resolve boost to your personal frenzy regions now. I think it's a pretty uh, pretty beneficial compared to what you're uh, what you're using now. Again, you're gaining Ursox Fury, you're gaining Rend and Tear, you are losing Scintillating Moonlight. Flash and Claws is an interesting choice. I think personally the two-point investment is a bit is a bit pricey for sure right like if you're trying to get this in a mythic plus scenario right like this is your mythic plus build what do you what is worth dropping to get flashing claws you know what i mean like in this like galactic guardian twin moon fire is a ton of rage generation and as well as some damage rage of the sleeper maybe you could justify dropping that maybe in a low target count dungeon you could justify dropping rays but uh i don't know it's it's a tough sell as a two-point node in the capstone area and that's going to kind of bring me to some changes i'd still like to see so first as always you guys know berserk i i need this to not be three points i desperately need this to be a single point between these three i'm perfectly fine with these two points down here i think these three are just they feel so bad berserk is such a terrible cooldown on its own and i just don't think this this justifies being a point none of these individually justifies being a point I'd be perfectly fine if they're like, okay, we're going to combine to the three, but this has to be in tier two and they push it down here. I'd be totally okay with that. I think that's perfectly uh, reasonable, perfectly fine if these three are all one talent point. It's just the way it is. It, it takes up so much space and it's just, it's, you can't avoid it, right? You can't, you have a very, very hard time um, pathing around it. I guess maybe not anymore. I'm sure the no Karn build probably has some benefits to this uh, now as well, but it's just, it's pretty annoying for sure. And I'd like to see these just conglomerated into one talent point. Um, the other thing, a way to actively mitigate magic damage, obviously um, with the gains versus Ox Fury, that's going to help you in magic damage in both AoE and single target, of course, with those absorbs from Maul and Thrash and, and Raze, of course. But I think having maybe like the old adaptive fur back, which is just like a 10% magic DR whenever you have iron fur up, it doesn't stack. It's just a flat 10%, no matter how many iron furs you have. Maybe the return of something like Marker of Ursoles, just anything that will help out a little bit in that department. I think these changes alone do actually help a little bit, right? You have that more self-healing. You have that absorb shield buffer potentially in certain situations, but there are going to be situations where those either that absorb gets eaten up or it's like a one-shotty uh, high magic mechanic like Dark Claw, but I mean, that doesn't really seem to exist so far in this season, but that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, which Guardian could certainly use some help against. Um, Two-point nodes. Let's talk about that. I mentioned it earlier. I think a reduction in two-point nodes is super necessary here. Uh, having four two-point nodes gating your tier two area, and then these two two-point nodes here in the capstone area, which just feel extremely hard to justify putting those two points into because it's in the capstone area, it just kind of feels bad. I'm not a fan of having really any two-point nodes in the capstone area. Like I said, I think it just feels bad. Those two-point nodes have to be exceptionally powerful. Every single point has to be exceptionally powerful in order for it to actually feel worthwhile. And even then, it doesn't really feel good. I'd love to see these uh, maybe turned into one-point nodes and moved up to replace these two berserk nodes here. Obviously, maybe power level-wise, they need to be brought down a little bit. Maybe the two-point value at a one-point cost is too much i can accept that as well with some of these points up here even like i don't even think reinvigoration would be a bad node if it was actually just a one point node that was a 20 percent cdr and frenzied region i think that would that would be probably acceptable right uh so stuff like that just a reduction in these four two point nodes and, and these two here because the way it stands even with the buffs of flashing claws i find it hard to justify ever taking it and similarly since lady moonlight with the additions of Rend and Tear and Ursox Fury being more accessible, like if these are your choices, you get 10% DR, or you get 6% DR, 6% damage, and a 60% shield from Thrash, Raze, and Maul, like that's a no-brainer, right? You're going to take these two every single time. This just isn't powerful enough to justify you actually putting points 
into it. Aside of that, you know, maybe there's some uh, more interesting talents they could add in. I mentioned Adaptive Fur or Slash Mark of Ursul's potentially. Um, you know, Natural Order's Will or our Sepulchre two-piece where we used Barkskin and we got uh, Incarnation for a few seconds. Those would be great options. Would love to see those. I think Pulverize also needs a ton of help here. We saw buffs to Lunar Beam, right? But Pulverize still is a pretty uh, lackluster button. It got moved all the way down to like a capstone level now, right? And like, like I showed you in those builds, there's universes where you take all four of these capstones. There's never a universe where you take Pulverize. It still has that drawback, right? Ray's got its drawback removed. Pulverize will still consume Thrash Stacks and doesn't really give you a big enough benefit. Would love to see this get buffed up, maybe boost its damage to make it actually a capstone. Uh, maybe make that DR against all uh, types of abilities. Uh, not just the target uh, that uh, the you hit with your Pulverize, right? That would be pretty nice. So some changes, some buffs definitely need to come to Pulverize here, especially now that it's a bottom tier talent to make it competitive. Because like, like Flashing Claws, like Scintillating Moonlight, it's just not something you're going to take right now. That's kind of my whole spiel on the changes to the Guardian specific tree. I will briefly talk about the class tree, which has seen no changes. I think there's a lot of problems with it. Uh, a big thing, you know, like, why am I having to invest three points in, like, core abilities for a different spec I'm never going to use? I don't think other classes that aren't Druid have to do that, right? But all Druid specs need to do that if you want to, like, get or progress down the tree in a certain way. You have to invest dead points, several dead points, not just one, but, like, three in this case, right? To actually progress down the tree. Like, if I want to get Typhoon, if I want to get Astral Influence, I have to put these three dead points in. I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me. On the same note, tanks, why do I have to purchase Iron for? I think Guardian is the only tank that has to purchase their active mitigation and their talent tree. It just doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, in a similar sense, uh, why is Soothe, just progressing on the tree here, Soothe is basically a mandatory pickup. It's the only way to path down the center of this tree here. Why is an Enraged Soothe something that is pretty niche and something you don't want in most situations, something that you're forced to path through, whereas other specs uh, or other classes in the game rather would be able to just, you know, offshoot note, kind of like Hibernate over here, just like, hey, it's, uh, you know, in Corporal Week, I can take my thing. Why why do we have to ta talent through Soothe every single time? I think that's something that could probably change. Capstones across the board here for Druid specs are pretty underwhelming. Nature's Vigil did get nerfed uh, in this patch as well, so it's 15 seconds down from 30. So across the board here, very uninspiring capstones for Druids in general, but you no know, focusing on Guardian Druid here. I would love to see maybe Convoke get the Divine Toll treatment from Paladins, and you know you move Convoke, maybe move one minute Convoke buff. Uh, over to the general talent tree because it's available to all druids. I don't know why it's in every druid's tree. Divine Toll got the exact same treatment. Would love to see that for Convoke. That may be not be a good thing for Guardian Druids because they don't really like Convoke. It's not really great because Cat Weaving is dead. Uh, but I think that is just in general a good thing for the druid class uh, just because, again, uninspiring capstones here. Overall, though, looking at the Guardian changes, I think they're very positive. I think Guardian's going to be in a much better spot in 10.1.5 than they have been the rest of the expansion. Would I like there to be a bit more changes? 100%. But I think a lot of the major pain points that I've had with the spec personally have at least somewhat been addressed with all of these changes and this rework and honestly it actually does make me excited to play guardian druid again maybe the first time all expansion that i felt that way so i'm definitely going to be gearing up my bear just in preparation for this patch i'd love to hear your thoughts on the talent rework though what do you like about it what would you still like to see let me know down in the comments below as always gotta shout out my patreon supporters thank you i appreciate every single one of you. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like it, and I'll see you all in the next one.